you were all at Crown, I won't do the long one. If you've all, if you've all heard of it. Oh, do it, do it, do it. I was not at Crown. We, we couldn't knew. hear it. Okay? We could, yeah, we couldn't hear it. I'm I could sorry. see you up there. I'm sorry. And it was beautifully done. And way back where the guys are lining up. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Projection is <laughs> it's a, it was a lousy space. Was part of it. Oh, it's a terrible hall. Yeah, it's a terrible hall. Oh, okay. So. Well, a lot of people told me they couldn't hear it, so I guess it just didn't carry through the whole room. So. There are bad people. Very sorry. Yeah, they don't have it. It's one of the ones that also accept that. Here. Or should I sit? Should I stand? Whatever you'd like. You could dance on top of Kyrian's camera if you wanted to. She'd fall off yeah, her, so it's a bad you idea. Leave your friends behind. Put your friends where dance, and if they don't dance, well, they're your friends behind. Truly, we're sure you don't want to hear it. You probably think that's not apologizing and performing. Shut up and say, ah! I mean, ah! This is um, a poem I wrote. So last spring was the first crown tournament I ever went to. And I, you know, there was archery, there was horseback riding, but, you know, I just stayed watching the fighting the whole time. It was just, I was riveted. And when it came down to the final two contestants and everybody got quiet, I was just staring and I, I, it was amazing. And so then later when I was home, a couple nights later, I was watching some videos that people had taken, kind of reliving, oh yeah, and then he did that, oh, wow. and I just, a couple lines started to form in my mind, and I was like, this would make a good poem. And fortunately, for like four days after Crown, I don't know if it was a mild virus or, or sunstroke or something, but I was kind of just lying in bed, so I just took my laptop, and for several hours, just to have this thing together, and I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. And, well, people like it, and that, that makes me happy. I like it too. So here it is. <laughs> When Sir Cadigan fought Sir Redbore. Good ladies and lords, gather round now and hear of the knight who won crown, though the fight cost him dear. And his noble opponent, who though he fought long, showed endurance astounding and worthy of song. Sir Cadigan Blades and Sir Gutter Redbore, let these names be engraved on your hearts evermore. For never were two men so matched in their might, though different was each in the style of his fight. The day had grown long and the sun hotly burned when the final crown bout came for which all had yearned. The tourney had lasted for hours unguessed and the knights, sorely weary, had gone to their rest. Save two who stood, one at each end of the list, while the crowd hushed their talk lest the duel be missed. Both clad in their armor, devices, and braids stood Sir Gunnar Red Boar and Sir Cadogan Blades. As they took up their stances, folk laughed when said they, that their homes from each other were one house away. <laughs> True comrades they were, and today it was plain that their fight would not break their old friendship in twain. The, the round would be won with best two out of three, and the weapons they each took their turn to decree. To fight the first match, they each hefted a spear, and the marshals cried, lay on, and made the way clear. Sir Gunnar leaned forward, his knees he did bend, a serpent he seemed as his body did wind. His stance spoke of freshness and slowness to tire. His grace and his stamina all did admire. Sir Cadogan, straighter and quiet he stood. He was none near so quick, but his courage was good. Some marveled, thought, how can Sir Cadogan win? With Sir Gunnar so fresh after all he's been in. Now each began pacing and shifting his feet, advancing, retreating, both eager to meet their foe. With a face thrust, the match would be lost. They slowly came close, and their spear tips they crossed. Sir Cadogan gave ground, then each made a thrust, a pure mirror image of fierce battle lust. Straightway each recovered, their dance to resume. Sir Gunnar jabbed twice, but no strike carried doom. They closed, and once more at the same time they jabbed, and Sir Cadogan fell, and the face he was stabbed. But the marshals cried, wait, and they closed and conferred. Did you throw it at me? The ride quite <laughs> A few laughs, then the marshal stood forth to proclaim, the spear was not in hand when it met with its aim. The match would be we fought, so the fighters withdrew, and when given the word, they began it anew. All eyes were now fixed on who first would attack. Sir Gunnar thrust twice, pushed Sir Cadogan back. He thrust one more time, and his spear left his grip. You may want a lanyard, was heard someone's <laughs> The people laughed hearty at Sir Gunnar's 
oath. It was all in good fun. He was not truly wroth. The marshal's reminder met everyone's ears. Sirs, you fight not with javelins now, but with spears. <laughs> once the laughter died down, the men once more advanced. They weaved and they thrust, but their spears only glanced. They closed and stood poised with their spears point to point. Their tension was written in each single joint. Their blows broke the pause, and Sir Gunner cried, Yes! The watchers all cheered at his honest confess. The marshals made sure, then proclaimed to the crowd, Sir Cadogan wins, and the cheering waxed loud. Next they chose bastard swords, and the herald he spake to Sir Cadogan, Win, and the crown you will take. He respoke mid laughter and looks most askance. To Sir Gunner said, This you must win to advance. Once they clashed, then a pause for a moment, and then charged Sir Gunner, and struck fast again and again. Back he drove his opponent with fury to whelm, forced him down to his knees, struck a blow to his helm. Onlookers did groan at Sir Cadogan's fall. His beating was harsh, but he had not lost all. The marshals discussed with both knights to declare, Sir Gunner, and cheer it once more rent the air. The count was now even, and one match remained. This last would determine who victory gained. Agreed they to fight with both shield and with sword, and after respite, one would claim his reward. At last it was time, and the herald did say that the victor would call his love princess that day. The people who bowed and their cheering rang out. Draco and Victus, folk took up the shout. The last fight began, and Sir Gunnar stood tall. His confident prowess was noted by all. He raised his sword high, and his walk was a stroll. All his fights that day seemed to have taken no toll. Sir Cadogan stood, not an inch did he yield. Steadfast as the bison he bore on his shield. All saw of the two he was weary or far, but he stood there undaunted and ready to spar. Sir Gunnar advanced to a point, then did halt. He bounced on his feet, eager much to assault. The two of them stood facing off for a spell. Then the last contest started, which both men fought well. They both stirred as one with their weapons held high. They moved in a dance, for positions did vie. They clashed and they paused in a pattern most plain. So careful their fight, for they had much to gain. Sir Gunnar advancing, his peer stepping back. Ever pressing was red and retreating was black. Till slowly a changing most subtle did start, as Sir Cadogan warmed to the strength in his heart. Sir Gunnar breathed easy, stood straight-backed and proud. Sir Cadogan's chest heaved, his shoulders were bowed. And once in a while, from a sharp blow, he cried. Hearts bled to see valiance so sorely tried. Yet still they fought on, till a marshal came by. On Sir Cadogan's hilt, a loose cord he did tie. Then they gave to Sir Cadogan time for a breath, for his gasping was like unto one who nears death. Then once more they fought for the ultimate prize. Their helms hid whatever thought shone in their eyes. A flurry, and Sir Gunnar drops to his knees. Would this last fight of fights now be finished with ease? Now up steps Sir Cadogan, strength in his stride. He still moves with care, but now he stands with pride. Sir Gunnar looks up at his peer standing tall, awaiting with patience whatever might befall. Sir Cadogan tests him with feints and light blows, then steps back and waits for what nobody knows. Then he closes and strikes, and he strikes many more, till Sir Gunnar cries, good, and the battle is o'er. Sir Cadogan sways, and a marshal lends aid. He steadies him, takes off his helm with its braid. Then Sir Cadogan drops to his hands and his knees, and he gulps in great breaths of the cooling sweet breeze. His lady, she rushes to kneel by his side. She embraces him, beaming with love and with pride, while the crowd waxes jubilant, roars with delight, as they look on the man who just fought his best fight. Sir Cadogan stands, is approached by the one whom he fought. They embrace as they stand in the sun. No more fierceness, they each greet the other as friends, and so will they remain till their fighting days end. Now come forth the sovereigns for all the folk to see, King Cameron and his fair queen Amelie. Sir Cadogan kneels and is crowned with a wreath. The king on him title of prince does bequeath. The queen gives the victor a rose wreath blood red. His lady kneels down and she crowns her fair head. Then he raises her up and her lips he does kiss. 
and everyone cheers in this moment of bliss. Then their sovereigns embrace them, so gracious and kind, with the knight and his lady, the four become twined. The crowd cheers without end as each pair does embrace, and at last, very near, draws my tail's ending place. So Cadigan, now the crown prince, let us laud, his great heart and resilience, let us applaud. And Sir Gunnar the tireless, his praises to sing, I doubt not one day soon he will reign as our king. <laughs>